everybody from Veterans Stadium. Welcome to Phillies baseball this afternoon. The final game of the series, the Phils and the Cincinnati Reds. Sean Bosky making his Phillies debut this afternoon. He'll be opposed by Tom Browning, the left-hander for Cincinnati. Harry Callis with Rich Ashburn and Andy Musser on an overcast day and a very windy day here at the ballpark. And why do you new look lineup for the Phils this afternoon? Well, I think uh, Jim Fergosi wants to give some of these fellows a rest. Uh, Dalton Cruck was rested last night. And uh, Todd Pratt is in there. Uh, Batiste is in there giving Kevin Stocker a day off. Ricky Jordan's in there. And I think you have to do that once in a while. And you can't pick a better guy to do it against than this fellow, Tom Browning. He's around the plate. He won't want many. He'll, he'll give him a chance to hit the ball. Jordan is 9 for 18 lifetime against Tom Browning. Andy, during the winter, of course, with Mitch Williams going to the Houston Astros, everybody says, what are the Phillies going to do for a closer? Doug Jones hadn't been bad. Hadn't been bad at all, Harry. Hasn't walked a batter yet. That's the biggest difference from last year's closer. The thing about Jonesy this year is he's got about five miles more on his fastball. And for a guy that relies on his changeup to get hitters out, that's a big difference. The good thing about him, too, is he's got a rubber arm. If you need him every day, he's there. He's pitched the last two games and is available for the game this afternoon if needed. So it'll be going for the Phil Sean Bosky and Tom Browning for the Reds. We'll have the starting lineups for you after these messages. Phillies and the Cincinnati Reds is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aids for a crisp, clean, classic taste. Your local Chevrolet Geo dealer. Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. The Yellow Pages, 9 out of 10 people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For 56 years, the health insurance company you can lean on. singing of our national anthem here at Veterans Stadium. Weather doesn't quite know what it wants to do this afternoon. Earlier this morning, the sun was out, then it clouded up. Actually had a few showers here about 20 minutes ago, and now the sun is out once again. And we should have no problem getting the ball game in. Final game of this series between the Phils and the Reds, and the Phils trying to repay Cincinnati for what they did to the Phils at Riverfront last weekend by sweeping this series. Jim Fregosi taking the lineup card out along with Ray Knight, coach for Davey Johnson, bringing out the Cincinnati lineup. Carmen Motti of Mount Laurel, New Jersey, celebrating his 79th birthday. And our audio man in the truck, Mike Pops, a birthday today. Good crowd on hand for this final game of the series. The Dodgers come in for two tomorrow night at 7.35 and a business person special on Tuesday at 105 to wrap things up in this homestand. Bonnie Dystra before the game was presented with his Silver Slugger Award by Vice President General Manager Lee Thomas. And the dude was the first Phillies outfielder to receive that award from the Louisville Slugger Company and the Sporting News. Last Philly with a Silver Slugger Award was Dutch Dalton in 1992. See the umpiring crew, a good crew, Bruce Preming's crew. Well, he was uh, runner-up in the uh, MVP balloting. Barry Bonds, of course, won it. Barry Bonds right now is hitting 223, so he's off to a slow start, as is Dyke Stern. Quite a few hitters are struggling in the early going, and some are having great seasons. 
Bellies have taken the field behind Sean Bosky and Davey Johnson's Cincinnati lineup today as Barry Larkin at shortstop leading off. Hal Moore is first base bat second. Reggie Sanders, right fielder, hitting third. Kevin Mitchell, the left fielder, bats fourth. Roberto Kelly, center field, hitting fifth. Willie Green, third baseman, bats sixth. Brett Boom back at second base, hitting seventh. Brian Dorsett, the catcher, bats eighth and batting ninth and pitching Tom Browning. And that lineup facing Sean Kealoa Bosky. Well, there you see his record. He hasn't, he hasn't pitched much for the uh, Chicago Cubs. A little surprising the Cubs got rid of him because they needed pitching. But he always looked like a pretty good pitcher on the other team. He was the first round pick of the Cubs in 1986, 10th player chosen in that draft. Defensively behind Bosky, it'll be Dave Hollins at third. Kim Baptiste playing short today. Mariano Duncan at second and Ricky Jordan at first. Todd Pratt doing the catching. In the outfield, feeding Cavillia in left. Lenny Dykstra in center and Tony Longmire in right. The umpires this afternoon, Bruce Fremming calling the balls and strikes. Jerry Crawford at first base. Angel Hernandez at second and Larry Ponsino umpiring at third. Anthony Dean celebrating a birthday today on this April 17th. And we want to send along our very best get well wishes to Jim Connor in the Holy Redeemer Hospital. Jim's lovely daughter works here at the ballpark and hope Jim's feeling better real soon. Here's Barry Larkin hitting just 103. <laughs> on the inside corner, a good fastball, Sean Bosky. Missing low and away, it's one and one. Lark and lifetime again, Sean Bosky is four for eight. A little bit low, it's two and one. Bosky, 6'3", 200 pounder from Hawthorne, Nevada. Billy's he's got him from the Cubs for left hand pitcher Kevin Foster. Back and out of play. Two balls and two strikes to Larkin. Another foul back off and out of play. Now holds at two and two. Larkin in that leadoff spot today. He usually is a Three hole hitter or two hole hitter. But they want to get him going. He only has four hits and 39 times at bat. They say he usually does struggle in ooh. That goes all the way to the backstop, but he usually does struggle in the month of April. He has trouble getting started. That's really trouble when you're hitting just 103. a high foul ball down the right field line. Ricky Jordan. Nice play by Jordan. Right in front of the stands. Good play by Ricky and Larkin's retired one down. Ricky had a long run. He stayed right with it. A little shaky there at the end but caught it. John Cruck. Getting another day off. Well, they have some pretty good left-hand bats on the bench today. Crocker, Darren Dalton. Eisenreich. Thompson. Mickey Moore and Dean. Here's Hal Morris. He's batting 341. Morris. Morris lifetime with 386 hitter against the Phillies and in this series he's five for nine with a double and this year he's only hitting 474 against Phillies pitching. Jordan nice play to Bosky covering that's two down. 
Well, Ricky has started out after not playing for a while with a couple of fine defensive plays. Yeah, that was a nice play. Hard to his right. Ball was hit sharply. Gave Bosky a nice little toss. Had him easy. Bosky's middle name, Whitey, is K. Aloha. Hawaiian, right? That is correct. His dad was raised in Hilo, born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii. K. Aloha means the loved one. One strike to Reggie Sanders. One ball and one strike. Bosky lifetime in the major leagues, 19 and 29. He's even up against Cincinnati, one and one. Two balls and a strike to Sanders, who's batting at 286. Sanders is among the lead leaders in runs scored, 10 runs scored in the early going. a foul out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Both these pitchers will work quickly. Browning very quickly and Bosky doesn't take long between pitches. Full count. Pitches he's missed with, he's missed a long way. And Guanano, a birthday today, celebrating in Overbrook, Pennsylvania. A little bit high, and he walked him. So Sanders is aboard with two outs. He'll have to be watched. Leaves the league in stolen bases in the early going with three of them. The batter is Kevin Mitchell. Mitchell is batting 243, three homers, eight RBIs. Lifetime against Bosky, he's two out of 11. Check swing, bouncing ball past Bosky, which should be no trouble for Duncan, and isn't, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left after one half. Reds nothing, Phil's coming to bat. A veteran stadium. The Reds have taken the field behind Tom Browning. Jim Fergosi's starting lineup for the Phils this afternoon. Lenny Dykstra, center fielder, leads off. Mariano Duncan, second base, bats second. Ricky Jordan, first base, hitting third. Dave Hollins, third baseman, bats fourth. Eating Cavilia, left field, hitting fifth. Todd Pratt catching today, batting sixth. Kim Batista, shortstop, hits seventh. Tony Longmire, right fielder, batting eighth, and Sean Bosky pitching, hitting ninth. They're facing Tom Browning. It's his third start. He's 0 and 0. His ERA is high at 9.72. He's around the plate a lot. Dykstra first ball swinging. It's a fly ball to right field, and Reggie Sanders is there, makes the grab. As we said, this weather is not quite sure what it wants to do. The sun was out at the start of the game. Now it's really clouded over. They almost need the lights on here. Defensively for Cincinnati, Willie Green at third base, Barry Larkin shortstop, Brett Boone at second, Hal Morris at first, Brian Dorsett catching. In the outfield from left to right, Kevin Mitchell, Roberto Kelly, and Reggie Sanders. Mariano Duncan is batting at 279. He's been a good lifetime hitter against Browning, 438 his career average, including a couple of home runs off Tom Browning. Browning has been a winning pitcher in his career, 120 and 87 lifetime. The Phillies are the only team that have a winning record against Browning in the National League. Browning is eight and nine against the Phil's lifetime. He's a workhorse too. He pitches a lot of innings. He's uh, ahead of every 
every club but one in, in wins and losses that he's faced. That's the Phillies. He's pitched a perfect game in his career in 1988 against the Dodgers at Riverfront Stadium. Line drive left field, but right at Mitchell. Well hit by Duncan, but right at Kevin Mitchell. That's two down. Last year he had a broken finger in his pitching hand, which limited his duty to 20 starts. He was seven and seven with a four seven four ERA. He had a perfect game through eight innings here at Veterans Stadium in 1989, broken up with a leadoff double by. Can't remember his name. Young kid, wasn't he? Don. At the time, yeah, he wasn't so young either. Ricky Jordan hitting a 240. Jordan lifetime against Browning is a 500 hitter, nine for 18, including a home run. He'll turn his circle change up over on right handers. Try to throw it low and away and get him to fish for it. Struck him out. So a one, two, three inning for Browning. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. After one, it's a nothing, nothing game. After one inning of play, it's the Phils nothing and Cincinnati nothing. Upcoming telecasts of Phillies baseball include tomorrow night's game with the Dodgers on Prism and Tuesday afternoon's business person special on Sports Channel. Bruce Framing is talking to Ralph Frangipani, the Phillies ground crew supervisor, and I think he's probably talking to him about what I mentioned. He probably ought to turn the lights on. <laughs> I mean, he started this game in sunshine, and now it is really dark, and it's sprinkling a bit. Roberto Kelly will lead it off. Kelly hitting at 294. One strike to Kelly. Two quick strikes to Kelly. Let's see slider right there. Kelly chased it a little outside. Kelly was an all-star last year. He hit 319. Now it's coming down pretty hard. The fans are starting to hit for the shelter. This wasn't supposed to happen today. Line drive into shallow right, and Longmire has to play it on a hop. It'll be a base hit for Roberto Kelly. And it'll bring up Willie Green. He really fought this pitch off. He, he didn't really have a great swing. You can see he sliced the ball in the right field. Weimar wasn't playing, playing him that deep, but he couldn't quite get in there. Send along our best wishes for a speedy recovery. Tom Pressey in the Bryn Mawr Hospital. Tom, longtime Phillies fan, just turned 94 recently. Two balls and no strikes to Willie Green. Piazza and the Dodgers are in tomorrow night. Ben Rivera against Ramon Martinez tomorrow night. Business person special. Don't forget on Tuesday. Kurt Schilling goes against Pedro Astacio. 
Three balls and one strike to Willie Green. I think we'll see Kelly off and running here and the three one count. Kelly has good speed. Oski thinks so too. Kelly and it's a punch shot base hit to center field. Kelly will end up at third base and the Reds have runners at first and third. Green didn't get it all but he slung it into center for a hit and the Reds first and third no outs for Brett Boone. That's right he didn't get it all he just hit that about on the trademark and lost a piece of his bat. Infield will stay back. Brett Boone batting at 250. One ball and no strikes. Boone played third base for the first time in his professional baseball career last night. Back at his normal position of second today. One ball and one strike. Have come on now here at Veterans Stadium. Little squall, Harry. Squallage. It's coming down pretty hard right now. Bruce Framing is going to call time. Bruce Framing is going to call time. It's raining a little bit too hard. We're going to have a Delay in the game here in the second inning. Runner breaking. That'll eliminate a double play ball and it'll get a run home. So Boone will get an RBI. He's thrown out by Mariano Dunk and the only play Dunk had with Green going on the pitch. Kelly scores and the Reds lead it one nothing. Good thing the runner was going. That was a dead double play ball. I'll bring up Brian Dorsett. One strike to the catcher, hitting a 250. Joe Oliver has missed this entire series with a sprained ankle. Oliver is on a day to day basis. So Dorsett has caught the entire series. Veteran receiver. Center field and Gavilia got a late start and it falls in front of him. Being waved around is Willie Green and he scores. Stumbling and out at first base is Brian Dorsett. I think Gavilia really froze on that ball and ended up not making the grab in left field. Yeah, and after he made the grab on the bounce, he should have thrown it home because the runner was kind of stuck up there between second and third and they just kept he just kept running then when then Cavillia held the ball. It'll be a base hit and a run batted in. Pratt alertly getting Dorset who had straight off first base. It goes in Cavillia Pratt Jordan for out number two and the batter is Tom Browning. and two strikes to Browning a lifetime 152 hitter he's at two career home runs one off Jose Melendez and one off Oral Hershey's he's called out on strikes that'll retire the side Koski deserved a better fate but two runs in the inning on three hits no errors and none left we go to the bottom of the second it's two nothing Reds
the first of six midweek midday fun of the sun baseball games and a great first one bringing in Tom Lasorda and the Dodgers on Tuesday at 105. Take the afternoon off and enjoy the Phils and the Los Angeles Dodgers. For tickets, call 463-1000. Or stop by the Center City Ticket Office at Mellon PSFS Center Square Building and Dude O'Dowd will take care of your ticket needs. Dave Hollins leads it off. Takes one low for a ball. Hollins hitting at 324. Tied for third in the league and runs scored with 11. Fifth in the league at on-base percentage at 471. He bunts. What a good one if it stays fair and it doesn't. <laughs> just, just foul before it hit the bag. One ball and one strike. He's pretty good at that. We've seen him do it a lot. Yeah, right on the chalk. Just and missed inches it. the back. <laughs> one on the count to Hollins. State in history in 1969, the Phillies were no hit by Bill Stoneman. You wasn't here then, but you were a whitey. I guess you remember that game. Yeah, I, I didn't even talk to Bill about it. He's uh, in the front office up in Montreal. That was a, really the highlight of his career. He Change up, hit on the ground to Larkin. Gets Hollins, one down. Got Pete and Camelia. And Camelia hitting a 241 lifetime against Browning is three for six. One strike to Link Camelia. They play him as a dead pole hitter in the infield and the outfield. Larkin way over in the hole at shortstop. Two strikes to Incavelia. You see the defense, Larkin in the hole, and boom, near second base. Morris well off the line. The outfield also swung around to the left. Strikeout for Browning. Two down here in the second. That'll bring up Todd Pratt. Two, three pitches right in the same spot. Looked like pretty good pitches to hit right down the middle. Pratty is batting at 250. One ball and no strikes. Doing nothing to Todd Pratt. That's missing the outside corner. Three and nothing. Walk Pratt on four pitches. So Pratt is the Phillies first base runner of the afternoon. It'll bring up Kim Baptiste. Patty is one for five, hitting a 200, although he's hit some balls on the nose. Caught. One ball and no strikes to Baptiste. Five pitches in a row that he's missed. That's unusual for him. He around that strike zone all the time in his career 2.4 walks per nine innings coming into this season so he's a good control pitcher change up 
likes to use that pitch to right hand hitters. He turns it over, a circle change. You see the ball drop away there yep. and down a little bit. Pops a foul out of play. Still one and two to Kim Baptiste. him in but missed inside two and two struck him out third strikeout for Browning no runs no hits no errors and one left at the end of two two nothing Cincinnati Leaves it off for the Reds here in the third. Takes one low for a ball. Lined into deep left center field. Dykstra catches up to it at the warning track. Good play by the dude. He got a good jump on that ball. Finally ran it down at the track. One down. Well, he's really been complaining about the uh, AstroTurf out there. It says it's Hard as a rock and kind of hurts his legs. He had a beat on it all the way. Took it right in stride. Here's Hal Morris. He grounded out his first time up. Got Sean Bosky. Norris is 0 for 7 lifetime against Bosky. Norris really hits Philly's pitching. Two strikes to Hal Morris. down the left field line kicks back toward the infield away from Incavilia. It'll be a double for Hal Morris. Fourth hit given up by Bosky and the batter will be Reggie Sanders. Just reached out and poked that ball between Hollins and the bag. Not a very good swing but he got a double out of it. Our trivia question this afternoon is brought to you by Dodge. It's been 20 years since three or more players in the National League have hit 40 home runs in the same season. Foul back and out of play off the bat of Reggie Sanders. That was in 1973 when Davey Johnson hit 43, Darrell Evans hit 41, Henry Aaron 40, and Willie Starr to 44. When was the last time this feat was accomplished in the American League where three or more players hit 40 or more home runs? Hard ground ball to Dave Hollins. Holds the runner and throws out Reggie Sanders. That's two down, and that'll bring up Kevin Mitchell. Well, Sunday, May 1st, another birthday celebration for the Fanatic when the Phillies take on those San Francisco Giants and all children 14 and under receive a terrific cap featuring the Fanatic on the front. Compliments of Tasty Cake. Mark it down in your calendar. Fanatic's birthday, Sunday, May 1st. For tickets, call 463-1000. Kevin Mitchell grounded out his first time up. Big hack, no contact, nothing in two. Morris at second with two down. And 
missed with a breaking ball. It's two and two. Reds lead two nothing. We're in the third inning here at Veterans Stadium. Missing the full count. But he wanted to swing at that pitch and held off right at the last split second. It was it was a ball. Al Morris at second. He's called out on strike. Second strikeout for Bosky. No runs, a hit, no errors. One left. Go to the bottom of the third. Two nothing, Cincinnati. Today's game is brought to you in part by Budweiser Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. By Bell Atlantic Mobile. A mobile phone is only as good as the system it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. And by the AT&T Business Advantage. Let it work for you. Tony Longmire fouls off the first pitch. Nothing in one to Longmire. Longmire is one for eight so far this season. Our trivia question of the afternoon brought to you by Dodge. It's been 20 years since the National League had three or more players hit 40 homers in a season back in 1973. Davey Johnson, Darrell Evans, Hank Aaron, and Willie Stark have all hit 40 or more. Locked in the air to left. And Mitchell makes the grab. One down. It'll bring up Sean Bosky. When was the last time the American League had three or more players with 40 or more homers? Bosky, not a bad hitting pitcher. 200 lifetime. How about the Yankees? No, no. It's three players in the league that hit 40 or more home runs. It's not a team. Three players in the league. In Actually, the American League. Yes. Oh, okay. In the entire league on any team. It's been 21 years since the National League has had three or more players hit 40 homers. Bosky ground ball slowed down by Browning and picked off by Larkin. He might have had a base hit there if Browning had it just slowed the ball a little. See him just tick it with his glove. Allowing Larkin to get over there. Here's Lonnie Dykstra flying out to right his first time up. One strike to him. Looking for a year? Yeah. Three or more hitters with 40 or more home runs in the league. Well, Harry, I, I, don't, I don't have any idea. Last year, Juan Gonzalez, Ken Griffey, and Frank Thomas. As Kevin Mitchell makes the grab, and that will retire the side. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. Chris Wheeler and Andy Musser join you in the fourth at the end of three, two nothing, Cincinnati. The easiest, most hassle-free way to see the Phillies in 94 is with Phillies season tickets. Don't miss the boat. Get on board now. They're still available. And plans will be discounted should you choose one on which a game has already been played. Here's the number to call 463 5000 for Phillies season tickets. Reds have a 2 0 lead as we head to the fourth inning. Roberto Kelly is the leadoff hitter. He has singled and scored one of the Cincinnati runs. Otherwise, Bosky has done a pretty good job and wheels the, the runs that the Reds got were almost scratch runs in a sense. So far, he has, Andy. Yeah, there are a couple of balls in the outfield that maybe should have been caught. 
uh, which, uh, you know, the defense is not helping that much. That way, Lenny made a heck of a play in center, though. Oh, he sure did. That was a great running catch. That was the ball hit by Larkin. Larkin's hit a tough luck in this series. Out of play, one ball and two strikes on Kelly. He'll be followed by Green and Boone. They really don't know what to expect from Bosky today because he was a relief pitcher with the Cubs. He, he pitched as a relief pitcher basically during spring training, so, you know, he really hasn't had a chance to extend himself that much. Been a starter in the past, but you're right uh, as far as innings concerned. Now, there he got that fastball up there pretty good. Kelly chases a high fastball as Bosky picks up his third strikeout. This guy has a good arm. There's no doubt about it. Throws fastball, breaking ball, and straight change. And uh, they think he can help them in, the, in some ways this year. Now Willie Green, he has singled and scored. He uh, had a pretty good pitches last time up in on him, and he fought it off and flared it in the left center. Bouncer up the middle. It goes on through for a base hit. Willie Green is two for two, hitting this one up the middle. That's hit number five for the Cincinnati Reds. Brings to the plate Brett Boone, who picked up an RBI in his first time up. He got it on an infield ground out. It was a ball that might have been a double play ball, except that the runner was moving at the time. Last night, Boone played his first game ever at third base. It's got to be a thrill for Booney to play here at this ballpark, wouldn't you think? Oh, he said that. Yeah, he, he's very, he was very excited about it. And Bob was happy to be back here, too. And both of them used the word as nice, uh, the term it's nice to be home again. Mm -hmm. They have fond memories of living in this area. Booney got a chance to play Pine Valley the other day, so <laughs> he said he really enjoyed that. Played with Greg Lozinski. Those two were inseparable in their days with the Phillies. Safe at first is Willie Green. Green has not stolen a base. Tony Fernandez, who's been in the infield in each of the other two games in this series, is getting the day off. There's a good pitch by Bosky in on the hands of Boone. Worked him inside. Bosky had pitched twice in relief for the Cubs, but had totaled only three and two thirds innings. He's only one out away from that right here. On the ground. Hollins drops, picks it up, safe. It's going to be an error on Hollins. Everybody's safe. It is an error on Dave and. The Phillies had gone the last three games and 33 innings without any errors. Yeah, their defense has hurt them a lot this season, and they've stayed away from problems the last few games. Paul Hollins is going to try and do here is get an out at second. It was not a double play ball, but he fumbled it. So they have not played well defensively today. To mention a couple balls in the outfield have been a problem, and now that one. So two on, one out in the inning. Bottom two hitters in the lineup now. Dorsett. And the pitcher Browning, so if Bosky can bear down here, he can see his way out of this. Dorsett got an RBI single first time up, but then got trapped between first and second and was out. Reds ahead 2 0 in the fourth. Two balls and no strikes on Dorsett. We haven't seen Joe Oliver in this whole series. Sprained ankle. They thought maybe he would play today, but I guess they're going to give him one more. They got a day off tomorrow, so it makes sense to give him the extra time, bring him back Tuesday night. They go home, a home stand after this uh, ball game today. Bat handle looper, long run for Jordan. Nice play, Ricky Jordan. That's the second time today he has ranged down beyond the tarp to catch a foul pop, a terrific play. That was a tough play, too, as Andy mentioned. Uh, a real good play by Ricky Jordan because the ball wasn't hit that high, and he had a long way to go for it. And right there at the end, as he's about ready to run out of real estate, he catches it. Took a look to see if those stands were coming up, and they were. They were indeed. Nice play, and then he fired the ball back in. Here's Tom Browning, runners first and second and two outs. 
pitcher has batted four times this year and he struck out every time. Ball one on Browning. But he can swing the bat though. He hit a home run off Oral Hirschheiser last year. He has two major league home runs. Ball two, two and nothing. You don't want to see him get on and Larkin get up there. Because he is overdue. Yes. Strike two and one. Tom Browning now 33 years of age. That's a strike. Browning had an unexcused absence last year. Remember that game when the Reds were playing at the Wrigley Field and. He went and sat in the bleachers across the not in the bleachers but on one of the rooftops across the way. Remember yeah, that? Davey Johnson was not happy about that. No. He's a left hander. I mean, you expect those kind of things from left handers. In the air to left field, Incavilia back. He makes the catch. Ho oh, ho! What a savior that play was. No runs, one hit, an error, and two left. We go to the bottom of the fourth, 2 nothing, Cincinnati. Good afternoon, I'm Neil Hartman with a sports break in the National League this afternoon. First, we'll check American League scores. It's 3-2, New York out in front of Detroit in the fourth. Chicago 3-1 in the fifth, Kansas City out in front of Cleveland. They're in the sixth inning. All these ball games later on this afternoon. Minnesota and Oakland, Toronto, California, Milwaukee and Seattle, and Baltimore in Texas. Phillies trail the ball game. They're playing at baseball at Veterans Stadium. Let's go back to Chris Wheeler. All right, Neil Hartman. And we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. The leadoff hitter for the Phillies is Duncan. It's a pop-up out near Morris, and he makes that catch just outside the line. That's foul ball. Duncan has retired one down. The Reds lead it 2 nothing. Well, a guy has a good changeup the way that Tom Browning does. Sometimes he can use his fastball effectively to jam hitters. And there's an example there of Duncan really jammed himself and hit that ball uh, foul down the first baseline. He was looking for something else, and the ball got in on him. Here's a heck of a hand for a guy who struck out in his only at bat, but they're cheering Ricky Jordan's defensive plays. He's made two fine catches of foul pops down the right field line. Reaches out and fouls this one off. Nothing and two on Jordan. John Kruk getting a day off today. There's a chance that John could be back in the lineup tomorrow when the Dodgers come in. I think they want to play him tomorrow night. Saw him earlier today. He hadn't even changed yet. You know, he, uh, I think Jim Pagosi just doesn't want to use him at all today. One and two. John Cruck has really made a remarkable recovery. And everybody really admires the things that he's done, but they knew he would get tired, and they just need to sit him for a little while. Base hit for Jordan. Ricky reaches out and lines it to right field. That's the first hit of the game for the Phillies. It's a good approach to Tom Browning if you're a right-handed batter, too. If he's going to throw that change up or fastball away, try and take it the other way. And there it was on the outside part of the plate, and Ricky Jordan just hit it into right field. Yeah, if you try to pull it, you're going to be hitting a lot of ground balls. Here's Dave Hollins. Dave out on a ground ball to shortstop and is only at bat today. Browning is a pitcher that can really frustrate hitters because he gives them a comfortable over. There's nothing overpowering about him. Hollins takes a strike. And you know, they go back to the dugout and they can't believe that he got him out. But he's been doing it for a lot of years. Yeah, the Phillies are the one team in the National League against which Browning does not have a winning record. Up the middle, Larkin underhands to Boone, back on to first, double play. Phillies in the fourth, no runs a hit, nobody left, and the Reds continue ahead 2-0. That started to cloud over here again at Veterans Day. We already had a short rain delay. Here's how they scored. 
Reds have two runs in the ball game. Bo uh, Bob Boone. Brett Boone with an infield out RBI. And then Dorsett hit that fly ball to left field that dropped in front of Incavilia for a single. And that's it in the ball game so far. Here are the Reds to try for more and a tough luck Barry Larkin leading it off. He's fouled out and hit a ball that Dykstra caught on the dead run in the track in left center field. Larkin against the Phillies this year one for 18. But that one hit cost the Phillies a ball game in Cincinnati. Larkin has started to hit a few balls harder the last few days so maybe he thinks he's starting to come out of it. I mean, he's been in this game long enough to know how frustrating it is. It is certainly a game of failure. Here's a ball that should be played into an out, although Duncan has to feel that off balance. That was a nice flip throw. Mariano got a lot on that ball. And Larkin is out again. Well, the Giants and Padres are both headed for Philadelphia. You get to see Barry Bonds on the 29th of April. 735 ball game start of a weekend series which includes the fanatic birthday on Sunday and a free cap for the youngsters that day. Here's the number for your tickets four six three one thousand. Al Morris at the plate doubled last time up past third baseman Dave Hollins. Hits the ball in the air foul third base side that'll go out of play. Morris won for two in the ball game grounded out on a three one hookup his first time up. Reds lead the game 2 nothing in the fifth. It's one of those days where they don't know to put the lights on or not. Now they could use them again. Yeah, and if they don't come on instantly, it's not like a, you can make a snap decision about that. Funny thing is, they were on prior to the game, and they turned them off to start the game. You don't often see that. But it's been one of those days where it's been either, you know, brilliant sunshine or heavy cloud cover. Not much in between. If you have just a cloudy day, you leave them on. Two and one on Morris, who's been in three different spots in the lineup in the three games of this series. Normally he's a three hitter, but he's batting two today, and he was batting sixth last night. Fastball outside. It's three and one now on Morris. Hitting a 349. Billy's debut for Sean Bosky. <laughs> Base hit for Morris. He hits the funkiest balls to left field. Look like he just somehow hit that off the end of the bat, and it just kind of blooped him into the outfield. He is one of the best opposite field hitters you'll ever see. Watch this thing. Ball has good movement away right off the end of the bat, and look at this little clunker. Hal Morris is a good hitter. Umbrellas are going up again here at the bat. Reggie Sanders at the plate. He has walked and grounded the third. Pop up. Going to be playable. Ma mask off for Pratt. He grabs it. Sanders fouls out to Pratt for the second out of the inning. Next due, Kevin Mitchell. He has grounded out on a check swing and looked at a called third strike. We had an eight minute rain delay here earlier in the ball game and that was one of the weirdest it was so short we didn't even see the tarp go on the field only the uh, baseline tarp swing. Mitchell takes ball one. Mitchell has been for him healthy so far this year he's missed only one ball game. He's had quite a, an assortment of injuries over the years. That's where you get him out right there. He can somehow get that breaking ball down and away from Mitchell, or really crowd him, jam him up and in. Bosky throws him a perfect pitch there because Mitchell is pulling off. Look where his hip is already, and he can't reach that. The one-one to Mitchell, jammed him there. That's good pattern they've gone. Now they went away, and then they come back in on him, and now they've established two zones to Kevin Mitchell, where he knows Bosky can throw both pitches. Now it's up to Todd Pratt and Bosky to decide how they want to go for the kill here. They're going to go away. Whoop. Now, now Bosky, <laughs> a lot of shaking off. They haven't worked together, obviously. 
Pratt setting up a little outside here. And that's where they go. And it's a bouncer that goes on through. Mars stops at second on a bleeder through the middle by Kevin Mitchell. Last night he got a single, and prior to that it was his first tip that wasn't a homer off the Phillies this year. Talk about tomahawking a pitch. They had a lot of trouble deciding what they wanted to throw there after throwing two really good pitches. And that wasn't a bad pitch. It was a high pitch, a high fastball looked like. And he just beat it through the middle. Roberto Kelly, one for two, single and strikeout. He has scored one of the two Cincinnati runs. It's two nothing Reds. Two on here with two outs. Swing and a miss by Kelly. Rain coming harder as fans start to scurry. And this is just like what we saw earlier today. Inside, one ball, one strike. Starting to get the bullpen up now. You know, I think they figured if they got five out of Bosky today and he didn't struggle, they'd be happy. Mike Williams throwing in the Phillies bullpen. One ball and two strikes as you check out Mike Williams warming. Williams has been in only one game so far. Kelly chases and strikeout number four for Bosky. No runs, two hits, and two left. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Two nothing Reds. Bottom half of the fifth inning, and it's two nothing Cincinnati. We had uh, some rain here between half innings, but no stoppage of the game, obviously. And Incavilia breaks his bat, shatters it. Boone stays with it and makes the play. Incavilia goes on one pitch. One down here in the fifth with the Reds leading 2 nothing. Pretty good play by Boone. Today's game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealer. Hyundai, cars that make sense. The Pennsylvania Lottery. Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. And by the Yellow Pages, nine out of ten people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. Todd Pratt coming up in his only plate appearance he drew a walk Pratt making his second start of the year both have been against the Reds the other game he started was the one where Dalton came down with the back spasms right prior to the start of the game and he he didn't even know he was going to play that night it was a week ago Friday in Cincy nothing in two on Pratt Good eye to take it. One and two. Browning ahead in the count can do some nibbling here. And that's what happens. Oh, and Boone blows it. That'll be an error on Brett Boone as Pratt reaches. The Reds last night broke a, a streak where they hadn't made an error in, I think, eight games, and now they've had a couple of errors here. That was a changeup, and Todd Pratt hit it off the end of the bat a little bit, but it has all that side spin because he hit it to the opposite field. Kind of like the ball that Thompson hit last night to Boone when he was playing third. And he allowed the ball to just eat him up. Let's see if the Phillies can take advantage of the opening. Here's Kim Batiste. That's foul ball. Browning's doing a really good job. The Phillies are doing a lot of first pitch swinging because Brown, they know Browning's going to be around the plate. He has a tendency to throw the long ball, but he's been mixing them up well enough that they're jamming themselves a lot of times with fastballs or with change-ups. They're getting out front, as, it, as uh, it appeared that Batiste did that time. Certainly, fastball got a change-up and just got it off the end of the battle. But Browning's smart. You know, he, he's not a guy, as we mentioned, who's overpowering, but he really does know how to pitch, especially in the certain games. And he's a real competitor, too. Stays away from Batiste here, one and one. He struck him out the first time up. Browning has three strikeouts on the afternoon. Gets in trouble when he gets near the middle of the plate because of his lack of velocity. And today he's really worked the corners well. 
Here's a hard hit ball down to Green. Play the second one. Boone's return is in time, and it's an around the horn double play to bail out Boone. No runs, no hits, and error, and nobody left. And through five, two nothing Reds. And as we look at the Philly Fanatic, let's see how these two pitchers are doing. After five, Tom Browning has been really good, giving up just one hit. That opposite field hit to Ricky Jordan. Three strikeouts and a walk. Sean Bosky's pitched pretty well, too. He's given up seven hits. A few of those are pretty tainted. He's walked one and struck out four, and the Reds made the most of their opportunity in the second inning, scoring two runs. That's where we stand in the ballgame, two to nothing, heading to the sixth. And the way these two teams hit, you'd have to say this one is a long way from being settled. The Fanatic wants to make sure that nobody steals that cycle. He's got his blue cap on today, too. Wouldn't you just one day in your life like to spend a day inside that uni? <laughs> yeah, I'd like it to be during one of those winter days we had this year, though. Willie Green is two for two in the ball game. Here's a bid for another one, but Jordan makes a nice play. Green is retired on a sharply hit ball between Jordan and the line, and Ricky's had his hands full out at first base. Well, it took kind of a funny hop, too. The first hop was true. The second hop wasn't. Just kind of kicking away from Jordan, who made another good play. As Andy said, Ricky's had a good job, good game with the glove, and he has the Phillies one hit on the ball in the ball game. In steps Brett Boone. He's nothing out of two. He did pick up an RBI on a ground out. This game is flying along too because both these pitchers work fast, and for the most part, they're getting the ball over the plate. Going strike one on everybody, and as you just showed there on that graphic, each of them has walked only one batter. Back through the middle, Boone has a base hit. Right off the side of the mound, it kicked into center field, and that's hit number eight for Cincinnati. The 46th annual edition of the Phillies yearbook is available, and of course, this is a beauty because it goes back and recaptures all the excitement of last year. It also previews, previews this uh, year's team. 88 pages of colorful pictures and great stories about the Phillies. It costs seven dollars plus two dollars for mail and handling the box seventy five seventy five Philadelphia one nine one oh one. It's a beauty. Dorset is at the plate one for two with an RBI single fouled off. And pitcher Tom Browning out in the on deck circle. Dorset has caught all three games in this series because of an ankle injury for Oliver that's not serious but still he has not appeared in this series. And the Reds do not have a third catcher as such. Raining again, fairly hard here at the bat. Funny day. Out of play. It's amazing this many people came prepared for inclement weather. You see that, the number of umbrellas that you do see out there, because it wasn't supposed to rain today. I didn't bring mine. <laughs> A little backup cloud right now. Looks like one's coming back over the stadium. It's starting to rain a little harder. Can we send it back to the airport? Soon. Is it true that all stadium weather comes from the airport? Is that true? <laughs> Dave Montgomery has his own private weatherman. 55 strikes, 31 balls so far. Sean Bosky getting up there. They had the bullpen up last inning. Dick James at the Schuylkill Valley Nature Center is a guy that does a lot of uh, weather for the Phillies and is very, very accurate on uh, systems moving through and how long you have to play it for those windows of opportunity. We had a report on Larry Anderson who pitched today for Reading against Trenton at Wilmington, if that's not confusing enough, to make it further confusing. He was a starting pitcher. Larry Anderson was. He went two innings, no hits, no runs, one walk, five strikeouts. Sounds like he's ready, Wills. Can't believe that one guy hit the ball off him. <laughs> yeah, they'll activate him tomorrow, probably. Just the way Larry planned it, he certainly wouldn't want to miss a West Coast trip. Phillies are leaving for the coast on Tuesday. They'll be playing uh, San Francisco, 
San Diego and Los Angeles following games here Monday and Tuesday against the Dodgers. Normally don't run in this situation because if you strike out into a double play the pitcher leads off the next inning. He goes. Grounded foul third base side. But in this situation they ran. Reds trying to add to their lead. That's Boone who is on the run. Reds are ahead 2 0. We're in the sixth. Davy Johnson. They don't want you to see his signs. Can hardly see his jacket. Kaboon goes again, and it's popped up. He'll have to head back. Play for Duncan. Wind is a little tough here today. That's the second out. It's one of those plays where they like to deke the runner. But uh, it couldn't because Duncan had to go after the baseball. So Boone could see right away that it was up somewhere close to him in the infield when he saw Duncan looking up in the air. Yeah, it's not a day to uh, take liberties with these fly balls because they're not easy to catch. Tom Browning, he has struck out and hit a ball that was almost over the head of Incavilia. Pete somehow got back and caught it. That was a big play, too, because Pete had misjudged it a little bit, and that would have scored two more runs, made it four to nothing. Browning gets himself a base hit. Incavilia gets over to cut it off, but Boone makes it to third base. Browning goes to second. Tom Browning with his first hit of the year. He had been 0 for 5. It is a two base hit. Now, this is a good play by Incavilia. He saves a run here. As Browning hit this ball hard to left center, as Bosky made a real mistake, Incavilia has to go real hard to his left, cuts it off, and this makes Ray Knight have to hold Boone at third. Well, let's see what happens now. The Phillies have gotten Barry Larkin out all weekend, and now they have to get him out to save a couple of runs. He's 0 for 3 today, but he's hit the ball hard. Larkin one for 19 against the Phillies and here's a spot where they really want to get him. The bullpen's going to get up again. Big spot in the game for the Phillies because they're not swinging the bats well today. Browning's pitching well two nothing as opposed to four nothing. Mike Williams again starts to throw in the bullpen. This is a big spot. There's Williams. The Reds have left six runners on base today. Larkin chases a breaking ball. One on one on Barry. The Reds have had base runners in every inning in this ball game. Hits in every inning except the first. Larkin has not had a hit in the series and against the Phillies as we say one for 19 this year. The one hit of course. Won a ball game in extra innings for the Reds, the first game of the season between these two teams. Tough pitch to make here. A three and one on a good hitter, even though he's not been getting his hits. And then he got a problem on deck in Morris, and Bosky is starting to tire now. And this will definitely be his last inning because he's due to hit. Larkin fouls it, so the pendulum swings back a little more toward Bosky now on a full count. Threw him a high fastball, and Larkin was late on it. Reds have runners second and third with two outs. Hit hard, but right at Duncan. He's got it. And the Phillies are out of trouble. Larkin smashed it, but into and out. No runs, two hits, and two left. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still 2 nothing, Cincy. to you by Budweiser Beachwood Age for a crisp clean classic taste. 
Pico Energy, there's a new kind of energy around here. Pico Energy. And by your Philadelphia Mazda dealer. The hand that you hear in the background is for John Cruck, who has appeared in the on-deck circle. He's going to bat for Sean Bosky. Longmire leads off the inning. The Phillies are down 2-0. Jim Fergosi bringing Cruck out. You know, it's, it'll stir the crowd up a little bit, but he's short right-handed off the bench today because he's playing most of his right-handed hitters against Browning. Longmire being an exception to that, and Tony has had two starts in the series, both off lefty. Well, that's why the Phillies need to get Chamberlain back, because they're short a right-handed hitting outfielder right now. In the air to center. Getting back is Kelly. Longmire is retired, and Sean Bosky in the dugout getting congratulations all the way around. This was between innings now. We're showing you a tape, and Jim Fergosi says, nice job. Cruck had been out, but it's Morandini who is going to hit. He said they were going to use Cruck had there been a man on base. Exactly. He was going to use Cruck in that situation if uh, there had been a man on base and an extra base hit or a home run let him know made something happen. Now with nobody on base and one out, he'll go to Morandini, but he has shown that he's going to use Cruck in this ballgame. 273 for Mickey. No homers, no RBIs so far. It's a heck of a cheer a guy got for never getting in the game, huh? Really? Mickey played last night's ball game and he had two hits, scored a run, also drew a walk. Mickey's been getting a lot of walks this year. He really has been a very disciplined hitter. One ball, one strike, running runs on Morandini. Mickey swung the bat real well last night when he got a chance to play. Morandini has two hits and seven at bats career wise off Tom Browning. Two balls and two strikes. Corey Schneider, who hasn't played much this year, has hit two home runs today for the Dodgers. We'll see them here at the vet tomorrow. Larkin gets turned around by the wind, but he stays with it and catches Morandini's pop up. Two outs in the Phillies sixth. Lenny Dykstra time. Today, Lenny has flied to right and flied to left. Bases empty, two out here in the sixth. Lenny hitting at the moment at 208. Plays off a high pitch. Phillies with just the one hit, a one out single in the fourth inning by Jordan. Hit hard. Stays in the air too long, and Sanders makes the play, and down go the Phillies. Rich Ashburn and Harry Callis return in the seventh inning. It's still 2 0 Reds. Nothing. The Reds lead here in the seventh inning, and Bobby Munoz will be the new pitcher for the Phils, coming in for Sean Bosky. So Bobby Munoz is coming on. Bosky pitched well, gave up two runs in nine innings, and left for the pinch hitter in the sixth. Munio is appearing in his fifth game. No wins, no losses. A 4-1-5 ERA. He does have one save. He's pitched four in the third innings, four hits, two earned runs, two strikeouts, too many walks, six walks. Al Morris leads it off. Morris is two for three, having some kind of series. And he always hits well in this ballpark. Lifetime in this park. He's 35 for 75. Duncan makes that play. Before that at bat, that was a lifetime 467 average here at Veteran Stadium. Well, he's a pretty good hitter, and he hits other teams, but he doesn't hit them nearly as well as he hits the Phillies. He's a lifetime 300 hitter. Reggie Sanders has walked rounded out and fouled out. 
Reds two runs, nine hits, one error. Phillies no runs, one hit, and one error. Tom Browning has made it look easy here this afternoon for Cincinnati. Two balls and no strikes to Reggie Sanders. On the outside corner, it's two and one. Here's Browning. From Casper, Wyoming. Smashed down the left field line, going all the way to the corner. Reggie Sanders will get two on. I think the deal is having trouble with it, but Sanders holds at second base. A double for Reggie Sanders. He really smoked this ball. I mean, that was a bullet. Collins had very little time to react. He juggled there a little bit with the ball, but made a good throw to third. Brings up Kevin Mitchell. He's grounded out, struck out, and singled. One ball and no strikes to Kevin Mitchell. Looks like he's had a few chances to score a lot more runs. They have 10 hits. One ball and one strike. David Johnson kind of sitting on a hot seat in Cincinnati. This club ever falters, he may be history because Marge shot likes Ray Knight. Doesn't seem to be too worried about it. When you talk to him, another foul out of play. Ray Knight was kind of a reluctant coach. He didn't know that he wanted to get back into baseball, that he was going to try it. Married to Nancy Lopez, probably gets a golf tip now and then. There goes the runner, and Mitchell's hit by a pitch ball. One of the problems Munoz has is runners stealing on him. It takes him a while to get the ball to the plate. He doesn't hold him real well. Sanders got a running jump. He'll have to go back to second base, but he had that stolen. He could walk to third base, and Mitchell was hit by the pitch ball. Yeah, he wasn't going to get out of the way of this pitch at all. It hit him right in the ribs there, rib cage. That makes the runner go back to second. Brings on Roberto Kelly. So Munio is in some trouble. 26 year old right handed big guy, 6'7, 237. Second base. High with it. Two and one. Low. Three and one. 
That's what's hurt Bobby is control. In the spring training, he threw strikes, but he's walked seven or six and hit a batsman already nearly going this season. There goes Sanders, grounded in the hole, taken by Baptiste, rifles the first wide, it gets away from Jordan, Sanders scores, Mitchell to third, and Kelly to second, it's now a three to nothing ball game. Sanders breaking, cost the out at third base, he got that big jump again, and that ball had Sanders not been breaking. They could have got a force at third base. But the Keith's mistake was that he looked to third instead of throwing the ball. And then he finally did throw it. He threw it late, way late. The runner was safe. He threw the ball wide. It's going to be an infield single and an error on Kim Baptiste. And the Phillies will bring the infield up for Willie Green with the runners at second and third and one out. Green lost a fly ball to deep left. This will be deep enough to score the run. Incavillia makes the catch. Mitchell waltzes home, and it's now 4 0 Cincinnati. <laughs> Kelly holds on at second base. Unearned. Both runs unearned. Is that he, well, no, they aren't either. They didn't. They didn't give. A, they gave the batter a base hit on that ball. The Batiste threw away. Brad Boone lines it to right Ooh. field over the head of Longmire, who is frozen on it. Roberto Kelly will score, and the Reds now lead it five to nothing here in the seventh inning. It'll be a double for Boone. Well, he's played a pretty bad game here. You have to give down Tom Browning a lot of credit for how he's pitched, but fielding has been terrible. There's a ball that would be a hit, but Longmire broke in on the line drive and had no chance. He'd have broke back right away. I think he could have caught the ball. That'll bring out Brian Dorsett, the catcher. He's singled, fouled out on a great catch by Ricky Jordan and popped up. One strike to him. Three runs across for the Reds here in the seventh. It is five nothing Cincinnati. Good breaking ball. No balls and two strikes. Two strikes. Taps softly toward third base, and Hollins throws out Dorset, and that will retire the side. Reds get three runs in the inning, three hits, one Philly air, one man left. Stretch time of the bet. We go to the bottom of the seventh, five nothing Cincinnati. Here's the Chevrolet game summary. Browning is only allowed one hit in six innings. He's had three strikeouts and one walk. Two of those base runners wiped out on double plays. Reds a two run second inning. One of those runs was a gift. And then three runs in the seventh uh, for Cincinnati, and one of those runs was unearned. Five nothing, Cincinnati. Mariano Duncan leads it off for the Phils. Bottom of the seventh, he's lined out to left and fouled out to first base. One ball and one strike. Pop him up, foul and. Dorsett's going to run out of room. One ball and two strikes. That's quite an amazing statistic yeah. when you think of that. I mean, seven pitches for balls since the second inning. Still a few balls that hitters have swung at. 
but not many. One ball and two strikes. He pops him up in the air. Barry Larkin shading the sun. Makes the grab. Duncan's out one down. That'll bring up Ricky Jordan. Thomas Howard is in left field now, replacing Kevin Mitchell for Cincinnati. There's Howard. Jordan has the only hit off Tom Browning this afternoon. He is one for two. Fouls that one back and out of play. No balls and two strikes to Ricky Jordan. Speed pitch struck him out. Four strikeouts for Browning, two down here in the seventh. Big old curveball there that broke low. Here it is. Phillies are the only club that he has a losing record against in his career, and he's about to even up his record with the Bills here. Eight and nine lifetime. That's a tap. Browning's going to have to hurry. No play. An infield single for Hollins. Browning lost his footing, or he might have had Hollins. He got over there quickly. The old swinging bunt here. He's over there in a hurry. Feels the ball, but very strict. Brings up Pete and Camellia, who has struck out and popped up. Strikes to Incabelia. Here's a surprise for you, Whitey. Atlanta leads the Cubs. Four nothing. <laughs> There's a towering pop-up. Who wants it? Barry Larkin, the take charge guy in the infield, does, and that'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We move to the eighth inning. It's five-nothing Cincinnati. Today's Phillies game on PHL 17 is brought to you in part by your Quality Plus Ford dealers who invite you to test drive the brand new 1994 Mustang convertible. And by Pizza Hut, get a large cheese pizza delivered every day for just $7.99. And by 1994 Clear Ultra Baseball, better than ever. Tom Browning leads it off. Browning has doubled in three at bats. One strike to him. Browning has one career home run. And it is off a guy in the Phillies dugout. Whitey. Bouncing ball to Mariano Duncan. That's one down. Off Norm Charlton. Ooh. They were teammates. Yeah. For a while. Here's Larkin. Who is 0 for 4, but he's hit the ball right on the nose the last three times up. That's what happens when you're hitting under the interstate. He's hitting just 0 93 as he stands in there. He was really hit it hard the last three times up, right at people. Nobody's going to get that one. So Mark 
Falcons got to say finally. Finally I didn't hit it at somebody. He'll come around. He always has slow starts. All-star shortstop. Here's somebody will pay for that. Yep. Down the line. Cincinnati's had base runners every inning. Here's Al Morris. He's two for four. Hitting over 450 here at this ballpark. Duncan's going to get him this time. Baptiste throws it away. He was under pressure. He got Wait hit. a minute. Oh, yeah. Duncan, they're going to they're call an interference double play on Larkin. They're going to complete the double play as Baptiste was hit. Call made by Angel Hernandez. Davey Johnson is going to argue it, but they're going to call the base runner interference double play. Davey Johnson arguing with Angel Hernandez, saying that Larkin impeded the throw by Kim Baptiste to try to complete the double play. Runner interference, so call it a double play. Here it is. Great play to get the ball by Duncan. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Well, he, uh, put he, his he, arm he did out. throw out that arm and kind of tackle Batiste. Had he not thrown the arm out, he probably would have gotten away with it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the eighth, five nothing Cincinnati. Todd Pratt leads it off to the Phillies, bottom of the eighth. Pratt has walked and been safe out of there. Fouled off the first pitch, one strike to Pratt. One ball and one strike. Special birthday wishes to Anthony Green, brother of Phillies employees Chris and John. Chris works in the town Green and John in the ticket office. Two balls and a strike here to Todd Pratt. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Reds lead 5 0, about hit the Phillies 13 2. Well hit to center field. Backtracking is Kelly, and this ball is caught by Roberto Kelly against the fence. Mm. Nice play by Kelly, one down. He hit that wall hard. He wasn't sure whether it was going to have room or not. That's good, good catch. Padding, he hit, so he shouldn't be hurt. The easiest, most hassle-free, fun way to see the Phils is with Philly's season ticket. It's not too late to get your season tickets. Don't miss the boat. Many different types of plans to choose from, including the 16-game plan for $192. For information, just call 463-5000 on season tickets. Here's Kim Baptiste. He has struck out and grounded into a double play. Phillies today, Whitey, have not had a runner reach second base. That's how much in command Browning has been. Takes a funny hop on Willie Green, but he stays with it. Low throw, and Morris digs it out. That's two down. Travel arranged through U.S. Air with low Liberty failures between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh on 15 daily flights because U.S. Air begins with you. Here's Tony Longmeyer. He has flied to left and flied to center. And he pops him up towards shortstop. Barry Larkin waits. And he squeezes it, and that will retire the side. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We go to the ninth inning. Cincinnati leads the Bills 5 to nothing. After eight innings of play, Cincinnati 5 and the Phillies nothing. Monday and Tuesday at 8, some say he was dangerous. Others say he was one of the greatest men that ever lived. Gregory Peck stars in MacArthur on PHL 17. Mike Williams is the Phillies' new pitcher coming in here in the ninth inning. Williams has appeared in one previous game this year. Two innings, six up and six down. Facing Reggie Sanders to lead it off for the Reds here in the ninth inning. Cincinnati's out hit the Phillies 13-2 and lead 5-0. Sanders is one for three. Has walked, grounded out, fouled out, and doubled. Two 
quick strikes to him. Game's on for Bobby Munoz. Munoz going two innings, charged with three runs, two of them earned on four hits. Three pitches and Sanders a walk back to the dugout. Two sliders and a fastball that Sanders thought was a little outside. It was close. Brings up Thomas Howard. He's batting for the first time. He came in for Kevin Mitchell. Tom Browning is wiping the sweat off. He didn't think he worked up the sweat so far. Phillies have just two hits off him, and Nary, a Philly runner, has reached second base. One ball and one strike. Howard is hitting 449. All of his hits have been left handed. He's four for eight left handed, and he's now five for nine left handed. He ropes a single up the middle. The Reds 14th hit of the ball game. And that'll bring up Roberto Kelly. Kelly's two for four. Dodgers here tomorrow night. Ben Rivera goes against Ramon Martinez tomorrow night. Tuesday afternoon, business person special at 105. Kurt Schilling and Pedro Astacio in that one. Another hit. Longmire over to cut it off. Howard will go to third, and the Reds have runners at first and third with one out. Okay, they're spraying hits all over the ballpark today. 15 hits. One of those days, they're all finding holes. Batter will be Willie Green. He's two for three with a pair of singles, a ground out, and a sacrifice fly. Runner breaking. Kraft's throw will be late. Stolen base for Roberto Kelly, his third. We're going to bring the infield in now. We're going to put Willie Green on. Set up a double play possibility with Brett Boone waiting on deck. Now Willie Green gets the intentional walk. This loads the bases with Reds with one out for Brett Boone. Boone's two for four is grounded out even with fielder's choice, singled and doubled. And the infield will drop back at double play depth. John Bosky started this game for the Phils. He pitched well, gave up two runs, should have given up just one in the six innings that he pitched. That's got three in the seventh, and threatening to get more here in the ninth. One ball and no strikes to Boone. a high pop up into shallow right field. Mariano Duncan going out makes the grab tagging and coming home as Howard and he's safe at home play. Crack couldn't quite handle the throw. 
So even though that was in shallow right field, Howard scores on what will be a sacrifice fly, and it's 6 nothing Cincinnati. Now Duncan was brushed, I think, there. No, he wasn't brushed. Made a good throw. She cracked juggling the ball, and he couldn't get the tag over there. So give Boone a run batted in. It's a gift RBI. He pop up to the second baseman. And the batter will be Brian Dorsett, the catcher, who's one out of four. He is punches a base hit to center field, and that'll bring home Roberto Kelly. And it is now seven to nothing, Cincinnati. Sixteenth hit for Cincinnati, and here's Tom Browning, the pitcher, who is one out of four himself. One strike to Browning. Seven nothing Cincinnati here in the ninth inning. Balls and two strikes. Come back. Look. Back. Well, that's your first game right here. Bobs a foul down the left field side. 43,400 the paid attendance here this afternoon at Veterans Stadium, and the fans have. Not had much to cheer about as far as the Phillies are concerned. That's leading this one seven to nothing. The Phillies have picked up just two hits in this game and have had nary a base runner reach second base. Browning stays alive at nothing and two. Him out that will retire the side. Cincinnati gets two more runs in the inning. They do it with three hits. No Philly errors and two men left. We go to the bottom half of the ninth. Seven to nothing. Cincinnati. Well, the crowd has something to cheer about. John Crock coming in as a pinch hitter. He gets a standing O and he takes a called strike. Crocker batting 313. Now balls and two strikes to Croc. Boy, has Tom Browning been in command this afternoon. Two hits, single to right by Jordan, infield single by Hollins. One walk. He walked flat on uh, four straight pitches. And I can't remember anybody who's been behind in the count since then. One and two. Just Ooh. missed two and two. He balls and two strikes to Crock. It's amazing. The Phillies have gone 174 games. National League record without being shut out from August of 92 till the end of last season. Crock. Draws a walk, the second walk given up by Browning. And the Phillies are in danger unless they score here in this ninth inning of being shut out for the second time on this homestand. Colorado Rockies doing it to the Phillies on Thursday night. 
Ronnie Dykstra is fly to right, fly to left, and line to right. Fouls it back and out of play. A ball's and a strike to Dykstra. Eddie hitting just 204 as he stands in there, but Dykstra also did not have a good month of April last year. He was even lower than this. Change up for a strike. No balls and two strikes. But he certainly had five and a half great months after April. Missing with a breaking ball, one ball and two strikes. Another foul ball. Dodgers are well up on Pittsburgh this afternoon. Corey Snyder's hit a couple of homers. Tommy Lasorda and the Dodger Blue will be here at Veterans Stadium tomorrow night. Mike Piazza and company. The brothers Lasorda. Bouncing ball to first base. It's a fair ball. Morris will make the play himself. <laughs> Not a very classic slide by John. <laughs> Just kind of fell down. <laughs> He's not <laughs> heard anything. <laughs> Truck at second base with one down. It'll bring on Mariano Duncan, who was nothing out of three. Phillies have two men on base with one out. Thought Morris left that bag a little soon to get the ball. Well, that's pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. So you would call that out. Yeah. It's questionable, but the Phillies have two men on base, and the batter is Ricky Jordan, who has one of the two hits given up by Browning. Reds now will get some bullpen activity for the first time. <laughs> Hector Carrasco. <laughs> Off the end of the bat to center field. Roberto Kelly is there. Squeezes it. Two down. It'll bring up Dave Hollins. Struck the first Philly to reach second base. He's at second. Duncan at first. Larry Boa has not seen a friendly face at third base all afternoon as Tom Browning has just been masterful here. Collins has one of the two hits given up by Browning, an infield single. He's one for three. Places a foul down the first base side. The ball's in a strike to Dave Hollins. <laughs> Nothing and one to Dave Hollins. Well hit. 
to deep right field, but Sanders has a beat on it. This game is over. A two-hit shutout by Tom Browning. He is our Chevrolet player of the game. Browning was just in total command all afternoon. Our Chevrolet player of the game is Mr. Browning, who pitches a two-hit shutout here at Veterans Stadium and took the Phillies till the ninth inning to get a runner to second base. That was John Crock, who got a pinch hit walk and moved to second on a ground down. So a superb job by Browning as the Reds salvage this one. Salvage a game in this series, and they did it by a score of seven to nothing, banging out 16 hits. We'll be back with the totals in a recap in just a moment. Back at Veterans Stadium where Tom Browning was in total command this afternoon, shutting out the Bills on two hits. The Reds win at 7 0 for Cincinnati. Seven runs, 16 hits, two errors. They left 11. Phillies, no runs, two hits, two errors, leaving four. Browning, the winner, 1 0, and the loss goes to Sean Bosky, who pitched well in the six innings. But not as good as Browning, of course, and Bosky is now 0-1. Our next telecast here on the Phil's Television Network will be Wednesday when the Phillies take on Dusty Baker's San Francisco Giants at Candlestick Park. We'll be on the air at 4 o'clock. Check your local listings for the games carried in your area. Once again, from Veterans Stadium, the final score, Tom Browning shutting out the Phil's on two hits. It was 7-0 Cincinnati. For Rich Ashburn, Andy Musser, and Chris Wheeler, Harry Callis, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you from Candlestick Park in San Francisco on Wednesday on the Phil's Television Network. The Phillies and the Cincinnati Reds has been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aids for a crisp, clean, classic taste. Your local Chevrolet Geo dealer. Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. The Yellow Pages, 9 out of 10 people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For 56 years, the health insurance company you can lean on.